everyone. The eminent surgeon was walking through his local churchyard one day when he saw the gravedigger having a rest and drinking a bottle of beer. Hey, you, called the surgeon. How dare you laze about and drink alcohol in the churchyard? Get on with your job, or I'll complain to the vicar. I should have thought you'd be the last person to complain, said the gravedigger, bearing in mind all your blunders, which I've had to cover up here in the graveyard. The news these days seems to be saturated with people who are pointing the finger at rivals for all sorts of dubious motives. When we point the finger at anyone without lifting a finger to help them, we're actually pointing three fingers at ourselves. There was a time when people were given the benefit of the doubt, but that's becoming rarer. Many people hint at a smoking gun, and when there is none, or when none is obvious, they often invent one. The old maxim, a person is innocent until proven guilty, is often turned on its head. It's so easy to jump on the bandwagon and condemn persons or institutions regardless of who gets hurt. And, of course, living in the compensation culture, it's tempting to, be, to pin blame for monetary gain. Is this the plank, I wonder, Jesus is asking us to dislodge? When do we, when we do so, removing the splinter from our brother's eye, our sister's eye, will be a lot easier. Did you know that the literal meaning of the word Satan is accuser? Now in the book of Revelation it says he, Satan, accuses us day and night before our God. When we become complicit in the blame game, he can find work for us. And the plank in our eye gets a lot bigger. A couple of Sundays ago we heard in the Gospel that love is always ready to excuse. People can be labouring under all sorts of pressures when they make unwise decisions. If you notice at the Last Supper, Jesus never humiliated Judas in front of the other apostles, even though he was up to no good. When he left the upper room, they thought he was going to buy some food. They had no idea what he was up to, and Jesus never told them. Jesus was silent himself when Herod mocked and insulted him. And when the prodigal son turned his back on his frivolous past and returned home, his father didn't read out the riot act to him, but he actually reinstated him. The elder brother, however, in the story, who accused his younger sibling of messing up his life, turned out to be the one with the plank in his eye. That doesn't at all mean we're gone soft on sin, but we should be wise enough never to condemn the sinner with his sin, no matter how shameful it appears on the sufferers. In the parable of the wheat and the darnel, the landover warned against weeding out the darnel prematurely because the good wheat could be rooted out with it. That's the danger when we set about removing the splinter from our brother's eye while there's a plank in our own. St. Paul says, love is always ready to excuse, not accuse. We leave the ultimate judgment to God who is infinitely just and merciful. He alone he and he alone can set the record straight. Thank you indeed very much for listening and God bless you all.